UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience it on Fox Sports 1. Scotland's largest city plays host to its largest MMA event ever as the Octagon touches down in the Highlands for the very first time. And who better to lead the charge than the UK's most popular fighter, Michael Bisping. The well-traveled Brit will have his hands full, though, as the ninth-ranked middleweight takes on Talish Leches. The Brazilian currently enjoys an eight-fight win streak and knows a win tomorrow can shoot him into title contention. The Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts right now. Good morning, everyone. It's 2 in the afternoon in Glasgow and just a tick pack past 6 a.m. here in Los Angeles. I'm Karen Bryant next to a pair of well-caffeinated former champions, Dominic Cruz and Rashad Evans. Now, Dom, I know you were in Vegas for fight week. Everybody probably asked you, when are you coming back, champ? So what yeah, did you tell them? They definitely, I got a lot of questions, but stay patient with me, please. I'm getting stronger week by week. I'm looking to be back. I'd love to be back for the New Year card, but that's all hoping and uh, feeling the knee out. If not, early 16, but I, I will be back. You better believe it. All right, and Rashad, you've got a date set with Ryan Bader. Yeah, I picked myself a fight, and I'm excited about it. It's been a long, <laughs> long, long time. Uh, I can't wait to get back in there. It's been two years. We eating top ramen at the Evans household. Oh, it's getting rough over there. Time to get that paper. <laughs> Listen, Dominic, tomorrow's main event is an all top 10 affair. Your best friend, Michael Bisping, is taking on the submission master, Talish Leitch. Yeah, and it's no secret, Bisping has a very loud mouth. And the only thing that's louder than his mouth is the heart that he brings into the cage. That's something that could give him a great fight against Latest because he might have to dig deep. Uh, look for Latest to be trying to get those takedowns early. But Bisping, we all know he never stops ticking. He is always pushing. He's like the Energizer Bunny out there. And he is very competitive. I know he's going to be coming to win this fight. Well, he's going to have his hands full going against Talis on an eight-fight win streak, five in the UFC. And he showed great improvement in his strike. And normally gets it done on the ground, but his strike is where he gets He's getting it done now. A lot of power in his hands, but don't forget he still has that ground game. Once he gets you on the ground, he can submit you from any position, whether he's on his back or whether he's on top. This guy is dangerous. Bisbee got his hands full because he's one of those guys who now has a resurgence in his career, and he's coming back, and he's looking strong. All right, well, also looking strong is our co-main event. We've got a good one coming up between Ross Pearson and Evan Dunham. Rashad, what can fans expect? Well, they can expect Ross Pearson to do what he does, and that's come out and bang. Ross is one of those guys who's very slick inside the pocket and has really good takedown defense, but he's going against Evan Dunham. And Evan Dunham is a very durable fighter. He can stand up, he can bang, and he has great ground as well too so this fight is going to be a great one to see yeah i mean this is one of those fights where you got the precision striking of ross pearson versus the precision grappling of evan dunham it's striker versus grappler and these two are going to go at it so make sure you're paying attention because either could get knocked out or submitted at any second well we'll see what happens we're going to step aside for just a bit time to head across the pond to goldie he's standing by at the scale take it away mike What's going on, Scotland? How great is this? Welcome, the Octagon here for the very first time. We get set for the official weigh-ins. Gonna be a lot of fun. Sean Shelby, Joe Carr, Bruce Buffer, Carly, Christy, Ryan Stan, Mark Ratner, all here ready to give you a great night of fights, but first the weigh-ins. We begin in the heavyweight division. Daniel Omi Alunchuk against Chris Della Roca. First to the scale, Chris Della Roca. Tomorrow, it's the quarterfinals of the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup as Clint Dempsey and Team USA take on Cuba. Coverage begins at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox station and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Five. 245 for Chris Tellaroca. And his opponent, Daniel Lumi Lunchuk. 
Daniel Milantruk has a kickboxing and karate base since the age of seven. He's been fighting MMA since the year 2005, and he's won many championships in the Polish circuit. Look for him to be putting Poland on the lock with some finishes. to get us started tomorrow right here. Next up in the bantamweight division, Marcus, the Bam of these Brimage against Jimmy El Terra Rivera. First, we welcome Jimmy Rivera. Fresh off his win at UFC 189, newly crowned interim featherweight champion, Conor McGregor continues takeover of the UFC as he coaches on the all-new season of The Ultimate Fighter against Uriah Faber beginning September 9th only on Fox Sports 1. A huge superhero fan, when Marcus arrived here in Glasgow, he went to a local gym and saw a guy wearing a Captain America rash guard. He's been on a mission to find one for himself ever since. He's also been practicing Northern Style, Seven Star, praying mantis and judo to help with his dexterity for this fight. Tomorrow at a special early time of 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, it is a full card of action, including Michael Bisping taking on Talis Lachis live from Scotland, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Listen to this Glasgow crowd go crazy for Robert Whiteford, the first Scottish UFC fighter. He's won 11 of his last 12 with six knockouts. With all the support behind him, I'm excited to see him fight tomorrow. returns to Fox with a rematch everyone has been waiting for as bantamweight champion TJ Dillashaw takes on former champ Henan Barrow. It is all live, all free, next Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox.
tomorrow, it's an MLB doubleheader, starting with the Dodgers taking on the Nationals, followed by the Indians battling the Reds. It all starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Fighting out of the Netherlands is Hans Stringer, winning many BJJ championships in the European circuit. He's looking to bring the finish where almost half his fights come by way of knockout or submission. Keep a lookout for a finish by Hans Stringer. Albanian heritage, Sweden's Ilya Latifi trains with Alexander Gustafsson at the All-Stars in Stockholm. But for this camp, he brought in the very man that knocked him out in his last fight, Polish star Jan Blakovic, who tweeted, No matter what, we're pro-athletes, not enemies. That's why we help each other out. got the submission record in a tough tryout. He's got four submissions in two minutes. He was awarded $100 for each submission that he got. The guy he beat out and submitted was very upset about it. Lee said, you know what? I'm gonna give you the $400. Lee himself did not make it to on that season of tough, but you know what? He gained a friend and a lot of experience. of Conor McGregor at Straight last year, and Paddy will head out to Las Vegas after his fight to help him on set of The Ultimate Fighter. And despite his head coach John Kavanagh being thousands of miles away for his camp, he's continued to help him via videotape.
26. 126 for the hooligan. Sports desk in Los Angeles. Karen Bryant, Dominic Cruz, and Rashad Evans here. Caroline Pierce in Glasgow. Six matchups all weighed in. Six more to go. Up next, Stephen Ray and Leonardo Mafra. KO artist Mafra is up first. Mafra is a tough Brazil competitor. He was from Team Wanderlei. Uh, before fighting, his job was actually to be a surfer, which is something different. That's that, I mean, apparently it is. <laughs> Not much different than fighting, except you're fighting water instead of people. <laughs> I really fight be a people. Fight. But yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know you would sing. He actually got his nickname, Macarao, because his hair, when it grows out, he got that nickname in school. It looks like noodles. That actually means noodle huh. in Portuguese. Huh. Macarao. Why don't you let us know about that, Miss Karen? Don't you know Portuguese? <laughs> I do. 55, 155 for Macarao. His opponent, fighting out of Kirk Goldie, Scotland, Stevie Braveheart Ray. Hugely popular here in Glasgow, Stevie Ray made his UFC debut back in April in Poland. He had 30 pounds to lose in just 15 days. He did it and said any weight cut after that will be easy. Not only that, his wife was due to give birth that weekend, but he took the risk, got the W, and made it back in time to see the birth of his child. Fifty-five, one fifty-five for Braveheart. It's our first fight on the main card. Ray Amapra up next in the welterweight division. Leon, Rocky Edwards, and Pavel Pavlak. Paul Pawlik representing Lotz Poland. That's where he fights out of, and that's where he's representing. Says he would like to fight like Tyson does in boxing, but in MMA. I mean, who wouldn't like yeah. that, right? <laughs> that's what I always say, but why not? Also works as a gardener and a security guard on the side when he's not fighting. So a lot of us still have to have jobs while you compete. It's tough, but the struggle is real. The struggle is real indeed. <laughs> 170. 170 for Pablo. That's why we need top ramen at the Evans house, so the struggle is real. <laughs> no, not fighting, you're not making any money. Baloney sandwich. His opponent, Leon Rocky Edwards. Leon Edwards' UFC debut did not go as he planned. He lost his first fight, but the next fight he came back in dramatic fashion and got a seven second knockout. He says, you know what, he wants to be the first Brit to compete for a belt. I mean, Michael Bisbing, he's been great, but he's never quite competed for the belt. He believes he has what it takes to take it to the next level and be a title contender one day. 69. 169 for Rocky. Robbie Lawler holding tight to that welterweight strap these days, though, huh? Gee, yes, he is, boy. Animal. Leon Edwards, Pavel Pavlak, tomorrow, right here. In the strawweight division, Glasgow, Scotland's own, Joanne Jojo Calderwood fights Courtney, cast iron Casey. First to 
the stage, Courtney Casey. A lot of nerves this week for Courtney Casey, who makes her UFC debut on just eight days' notice. And she does so against an opponent who's not only her favorite fighter, but her daughter's favorite fighter. She practiced mixed martial arts as a kid before pursuing a career as a professional soccer player. But when that came to an end due to injury, she turned back to mixed martial arts and has found her home here in the UFC. And you just hear that hometown support. She's fighting at home. She used to be a belt nurse, you know, and she, she's got the sweet personality for it too, if you ever heard her talk. But you know, being at home for her is bringing its own challenges. She has a lot of people calling her and blowing her up for some tickets. And I feel the pain because when I fight, I got Uncle Jumbo showing up. Guess what, boy? Can I get a ticket to your fight? And I can just imagine that being at home intensified by a country behind you. You think she has an Uncle Junebug? She gotta have an Uncle Junebug. <laughs> Everybody's got it. Everybody got Uncle Junebug. 15, 115 for JoJo. Guys, she talked about having some personal issues before her last fight, in which she got submitted rather quickly. So we're looking to see JoJo back on track this time. I think she's got that cleared up and ready to scrap here at home. Won the strawweight division. She was touted as. You know, supposed to be one of the, the, the toughest ones in the weight class, and it didn't go out as well as she thought it would, but now she's getting back on track. In the lightweight division, Irish Joe Duffy fights Ivan George. Yvonne George saw a crazy fight back in the day when he was a kid and said that's what got him started into wrestling. From there, he started adding jiu-jitsu to it and then moving on to MMA later on in his career. More than half of his wins come by way of finish, and he has 11 first round finishes. So this is the guy who's gonna come out very hard in that first round. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Let's see how his weight's looking. 54, 154 for Ivan George. His opponent fighting out of Donegal, Ireland. Most famously known as the last man to beat Conor McGregor, when Joe Duffy heard that Josie Aldo was out with injury, he put himself in the frame, tweeting, let's do it again. And he said to me yesterday, with a couple of big wins under his belt, he'd love to headline a stadium event in Ireland with Conor for another All-Ireland showdown. Fifty-five, one, fifty-five for Irish show. You're pretty fired up about this guy, aren't you, Rashad Duffy? I do. I like him a lot, man. He's got that slick boxing style, you know. He's been kind of waiting for to work on his boxing. Next and really showing his UFC debut. of the evening, Ross, the real deal person, and Evan Dunham. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Evan Dunham. Man, I just love to see Evan Dunham fight. He's one of those fan favorite fighters because he goes out there and he just scraps. You know, he can get it done on the ground. He can get it done standing. And, you know, he goes into this fight. He says, you know what? Ross Pearson is one dimensional. I'm going to take him out anyway. I feel like it. 156 for Evan Dunham. And his opponent from Sunderland, England, the ultimate fighter winner, Ross, the real deal, Pearson. Ross is the guy I get the pleasure of training with at Alliance Training Center in San Diego. He's done most of his camp here with us. Very tough guy, I love spying with him. Has a real problem when it comes to trainers, track suits, and tattoos, though. I mean, he really wastes his money on this stuff. It's pretty ridiculous. I think the only thing he likes more is punching people and kicking people in the face, which means we're all in luck, because that's what he's here to do. 55, 155 for the real deal. What do you, 
What do you mean he wastes money on trainers? You just have all these different trainers coming? It's what? ridiculous. Just pairs and pairs of trainers uh, and track suits. Yeah, they, oh, they, they, yeah, yeah. they call like, them trainers, man. So I got to go with the, the UK phrase. Competing in our main event of the evening. Yes. Right here tomorrow night. <laughs> I am a fighter, I was born a fighter, and I feel I was put on this earth to fight. So if I can do this, this is what I'm going to do. Graças a Deus eu tive a oportunidade de estar voltando para o UFC, eu falei, agora vai o Racha, e eu vou dar meu melhor. Talos Leitis versus Michael the Count Bisping is a very important fight for both fighters. And Michael Bisping is coming off of an impressive victory over CB Dalloway. Bisping looking to finish, oh! I've got to follow that up with a win over Talis Leitis. For Talis Leitis, he has been undefeated in his recent run inside the octagon. He don't know who he is. Talis Leitis keeps it going. Me reinventei, voltei, tô vindo na sequência de vitórias. Então meu foco é o Bisp, eu não penso que vai ser depois. Eu quero é manter minha sequência de vitórias e lutar para frente, lutar bem. Talos Leitis, a victory over Michael Bisping brings him immediately into the top 10. And for Michael Bisping, a victory over Talos Leitis shows everyone that Michael Bisping is still world class, still improving, and still has his eyes at the UFC middleweight title. I will get my hand raised because it's my destiny to win this fight. It is my destiny to be world champion. So there is no way Talos Leitis beats me. When I look at Tallis, I don't see a polished kickboxer. I don't see a polished striker. This guy's terrible. You know, his form's awful. I don't think the trocação dele seja superior à minha. I don't think the wrestling dele é melhor do que o meu e o chão também não. Vou lutar para frente e vou buscar terminar a luta o quanto antes. The fight starts in my world and it will finish in my world. Não pretendo deixar essa luta nas mãos dos juízes e eu vou para nocautear o Franzar. I'm undefeated in England and this fight will be no different. The crowd are going to be going crazy. They're going to be happy to see me fighting in the UK again. And there is no way on this earth that Tally's Light is going to fly from Brazil and beat me in front of my own people. Sorry, mate, no chance. Our main event, please welcome Tally's Light Days. I'm a big fan of this guy. He's riding an eight fight win streak, five in the UFC. You know, and the biggest story behind him is the fact that he's coming back to the UFC reinvented, showing different aspects of the game that he didn't have the first time around. The biggest difference has been in the stand-up, and I think it's just because of the fact that when you're outside the UFC, you're competing with a little bit less talent, so that we're, therefore you're able to try out different things and gain the confidence that you need when you get back to the UFC. 85, 185 for Leitis. His opponent. Season three, ultimate fighter winner from Manchester, England, Michael the Cannabis Bisping. Bisping loves the energy from the crowd. One of the most competitive people I've ever met in my life. I literally think he races his kids at the breakfast table to eat a bowl of cereal. He's so intense. He's a man you'll probably see in the UFC Hall of Fame, so keep a lookout for the things that he brings to this fight. He's always up for arguing or fighting, and they usually roll together in one. So that's Michael Bisping in a nutshell. All right, come on up. 85, 185 Dominic, I think for Michael Bisping. Dominic, very much alike, which is why you guys knock heads. You ever heard the team, you, or the, the phrase, you spot it, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> Might pertain with little Bisping over there. <laughs> But Bisping looks good, though. I he mean, he looks, he looks really strong. He, he looks, looks really lean. It looks like he trained hard. He's in great shape for this fight. Check the embedded for that later on to hear what the hey, conversation really is. Hey, this is where really Bisping is. is at his best. Oh, he's got this fire when he's talking a little bit of trash. Absolutely. It's good. You've got to create an argument that we just wouldn't be any fun without it. You've been dominant. What is different about you, not only in the octagon, but also outside? It's my mental game. I'm very confident each more, uh, more than ever. And on Saturday, they're going to beat this guy for sure. Thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Talos Leites, the one, the only, Michael. The Count Bisping!
Back in the UK, for the first time since the Akayama, Akayami fight, you are here at home, how does it feel? Listen, people of Scotland, thank you for being here today. I am so happy to be representing the UK. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here in Glasgow. Thank you for coming. Tell his lies, he's standing here, he's acting cocky. I'm sending him home, a broken man tomorrow. I will perform, I will give you what you paid to see. Michael, then Count Bisping. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Glasgow. There you go, Glasgow. That's our official weigh-ins. We cannot wait to open the octagon.